Oh, my goodness. Look at that picture. My goodness. That guy. Do you even remember that guy? No. <laughs> no. I have amnesia, right? For, there's a number of years through there I have amnesia. I don't remember any of that. 1986 <laughs> Miller 400, your first cup win. Yeah. And that, a little parallel kind of to what happened yesterday. Yeah, it, that, that was, um, you know, they obviously they wreck. Um, Daryl and, and, and Earnhardt wreck. Uh, and then Jeff should have won the race, mm -hmm. and Jeff gets in the wreck. And then somehow Rutman, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Rutman at the time, he gets spun. And I never even saw him. Uh, at that point in time, and I've told this story before. Um, the problem with winning that race was um, we would get a pool going before the race started. Mm -hmm. um, on and you would take a number, you'd pull the number out of the hat, and that day we had the 21 car to finish fifth. We were going to finish fifth. We were going to win the pool. <laughs> we were already talking about it with eight laps to go. It was, it was like, do not pass anybody. Do not let anybody pass you. Finish fifth. We win the pool because the pool's all cash. Right. Right. Um, and all of a sudden, the, the wreck happens, and Eddie and those guys, we're all halfway cussing on the radio wow. because we've lost the pool. And, you know, <laughs> won the race, and won, the pool. Yeah, but then we realized we won the race, so it was, it was a big day. Wow, Man, that was really cool. It's been a really good pleasure having, having you join us today. It's just a, a, a library of questions, but I want to continue on with we were talking earlier about the rookie drivers coming into the sport. Yeah. 20 years ago, it was unheard of to put an 18-year-old yes. kid in one of these cars. You had to have the seasoned veteran, a 30-year-old. You know, the, the Dick Trickles of yep. the world were mm -hmm. a great job. When did that switch? What actually happened that we now get rid of the old guys and put the young kids in? Boom, Jeff Gordon. <laughs> and, and that's it. Yeah. He, he totally changed the paradigm of the sport. When, when we go back and we look at it, and, and I, I continue to go back and, and – we were talking earlier about the fight in 79 mm -hmm. that put the sport on, on the map. Uh, the rookie class of 79 put the sport on the map, in my opinion. Uh, Joe Milliken, Harry Gant, Terry Labonte, and, and Dale Earnhardt yeah. Sr. Yeah. Those guys, they come into the sport, they're all in their late 20s. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not 18. They're mm -hmm. all in their late 20s. And they all drove until their early 50s when you really start looking at it. That's the last class that really did that. If yeah. we look at... My father and Pearson and Allison and all those guys, yeah, they drove until their 50s. Uh, but that's the last class. Jeff came in in the early 90s and goes out in his early 40s. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to see guys that go out in their early 40s. Yeah. And he changed that paradigm shift from late 20s to early 20s. And, in the, and by doing that, he changed the retirement age from mm -hmm. early 50s to early 40s. So he's changed that. And I think when people saw Jeff, and saw what he had done and saw the way that, that Bickford and, and they had come about it in carts and stuff, that people started throwing kids in go-karts, mm -hmm. throwing kids in other things. And they saw that sprint cars or midgets, that was a way to cup racing. Mm -hmm. There was a different route there. You mm -hmm. didn't have to come out of a stock car. So it opened up our little world to a bigger motorsports world. Uh, and in turn, since that time, with Legends cars and Bandoleros, and now with simulation, with iRacing, yeah. these kids already know Sonoma, and they've never been there. Yeah. They already know Indianapolis and have driven thousands of laps at Indianapolis. <laughs> right. And and the technology has gotten so close that there's a lot of 16, 17, 15-year-olds out there that are where Dale Earnhardt or, or Terry Labonte, and I use those names from experience-wise, mm -hmm. not from talent-wise, mm -hmm. where they were in their late 20s because Terry Labonte grew up running a single racetrack or at best five or six racetracks. Earnhardt grew up running in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Small race and then expanded, at best yeah. and expanded from there. So it took time. So it's just different. Yeah, absolutely it is. Let's shift gears a little bit now and talk about what we saw at Sonoma yesterday because a lot of folks were thinking, oh, well, what about Tony Stewart? Is is this last year going to be kind yes. of a dud? And then he jumps up and wins that race. My goodness, <laughs> the drama that everybody saw with two passes on the last lap for the victory. What did you think of that? You know what? I, I have to admit, and and – most of this week, I'll be living off crow. Um, <laughs> I will say that because I'm eating a lot of crow this week because I said on Thursday that he wouldn't win a race, that he didn't have a shot at winning a race, <laughs> and that, you know, someplace below us would have to freeze over, and I guess the temperature dropped there uh, on <laughs> Sunday. I will say that uh, because they've just not shown that they were capable of winning races. Yep. That mm -hmm. team has not shown that it mm -hmm. can run up front. That uh, Tony Stewart has not shown. I think what we saw yesterday is a tribute to Tony Stewart – the man, the driver, the person, uh, that he could reach down a little bit deeper um, and go back to 26-year-old Tony Stewart mm -hmm. and what it was like to drive. He didn't make any mistakes those last few laps. Once he got in that position, 
Um, he didn't make any any mistakes, and he won that race with not the best race car. I don't he think said he was. That, yeah. yeah, I don't think he was the fastest race car. I don't think he freely they, admitted they that, ended yeah. up in the right place. Um, and and you know what went on in turn seven with with Denny, and then I don't know if Denny was Mira driving getting into Had turn be. eleven because he just totally missed the corner. Yeah, and 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 if let's go back to to the Xfinity race last year. Um, with Regan Smith and um, the Indy car driver that was driving for Penske at the road court. Was it Penske? He was driving Hornish? The, no, not Hornish. No, it was, uh, uh, it was Tagliana. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tagliana yeah, yeah. missed the last corner. So, yeah. And he gets a nose inside of him, and Regan Smith wins the race. Same thing here. You yeah. know what I mean? And Tony did exactly right. Tony did not put Denny Hamlin in the wall. Yeah. Tony cleared him and just went for the block. And and made that happen. So that was that was a clean pass. Tony was past him at that point in time, mm-hmm. uh, but th- that was an exciting way to win that race. Let's let's hear what Tony Stewart had to say after the race. Well, the second to last lap, when I went into seven, I wheel hopped and got, gave him the opportunity to get close. And I, if I could have made it through that lap, I don't know that I'd have had a problem on the last lap. But he was real close going into seven, and I knew I couldn't give anything up. And I got down there and started wheel hopping. Then I felt him hit me, and <laughs> and he did it. He did it gentleman like. I mean, it was. He didn't do it rough at all. And mine, on the other hand, was quite a bit rough when I got to him. But, you know, he's, he's a class act. I mean, I, I don't like racing like that. But, man, this, is, this could be what makes or breaks us get in the chase. So, uh, you know, you, you've seen the last two years what kind of drama is in the chase. So you can imagine what a guy like me, that it's his last chance to make it, what I'm, you know, what kind of chances I'd take to do it. So, uh, Tony, what's the feeling like after everything that's gone on the past few years? Relief, vindication, joy, all the above, or what? It's never vindication. But, uh it's just joy i mean it's you know there's been so many people that wrote us off and said that i wasn't competitive anymore and if you can sit here in 95 or so degree heat and and have danny hamlin breathing down your neck and martin truex for 14 laps uh, i feel like i'm as tough as i've ever been there you go tough he's as, as he's good ever as, been he's not as good as he once was he's as good as he <laughs> once as he ever was right yeah, for 14 <laughs> laps he was good he was good that's, that's for took. sure yeah so one of the things now he has the win but he still has to get in the 30th. He's only nine points mm-hmm. out. That seems like a relative ease. But the one obstacle we haven't really discussed, we are 10 races into the season. We have 11 winners. Yeah. Yeah. and, and ten, 10 more to go. Yeah, 10, yeah. Yeah, ten, yeah, ten, more, ten more to go. Ten yeah. more to go. Yeah. yeah. And and you have 11 different winners. And and, and that, that could become an issue yeah. because we've got guys – like Earnhardt Jr., guys like that that we know or we feel mm-hmm. are going to put a put a W in the column at some point in time. So are we going to have 12, 15, 16 different winners this year? And is Tony going to be the 17th winner, the odd man right. out, no matter where he's at in points? I, I almost don't see that happening. But the way Chase Elliott's run, the way Kyle Larson has run lately, mm-hmm. I mean, you've got to put those guys Junior in the, in the mix. Junior can get one. Jun- so there's three or four guys which take you the 14 or 15 wins right there. Um, Tony's best hope is our Tony's Tony's hope is that Kyle Bush and and Joey Logano and and Brad and those guys keep winning races mm-hmm. and taking them off the table right. for people yeah. you know what I mean but at the same time I think Tony's in a really good place points wise now what what does concern me a, a little bit about about this team is that until Michigan where has Tony Stewart been we saw him qualify yeah. well at Pocono not run as well as he wanted to have a good Michigan race Good top ten. He said there it was as good as a win. My mm-hmm. team did everything they needed to do. We saw the way he drove uh, at Sonoma, so he's put themselves in position. But they're still going to have to knock off good top ten and top 15 finishes to make the chase. Once again, and I say this every year and people get mad at me, making the chase and winning the chase are two entirely different things. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Two entirely different things. Mm-hmm. And and even though we have that process of elimination uh, in the chase now, some of these guys are eliminated once they make the chase. They're not yeah. going to make it out of the first round. Happy if to they be do, there. They're just happy to be there. And yeah. it's a big deal for their sponsors and a big deal for them to make it. Don't get me wrong. But, um, I, you know, I, I don't believe – I think these next few races are going to tell the tale of Tony Stewart. Now, we saw it happen last year with Kyle Busch, but that was a phenomenal year. Yeah. That, that was a phenomenal year. And and Tony – you know, is is doing it really? He set out eight. Kyle set out eleven. So there's a little mm-hmm. bit of a variance there. But I think they can make the points. I don't think the points are going to be an issue. Yeah, absolutely. When you when you look at the way we've got now, I mean, and don't forget too, AJ Allmendinger could easily yeah. pop up and win at Watkins yes. Glen, where he's very very good as well. We could get to that point where we come down to Richmond and there's some drama, some real yes. drama as some to who's going to be in and, and who's not going to be in. Yeah, yeah, some real drama for a change. That would be exciting. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, let's hear from. Uh, Denny Hamlin as well, because he was the guy who had the lead and lost it in the final turn. 
Tony was doing a good job, uh, you know, maintaining his tires, doing a good job of uh, running the consistent laps there. Uh, he really he, he gave me an opportunity to get close. On the second to last lap, he wheel hopped into seven, allowed us to get close, and then um, I just did a poor job of getting through 11. You know, I was expecting him to really drive in deep. I really thought that that was going to happen, and um, he did, but I also left the bottom open, which was a bad mistake on my part, but uh, still a great race. Uh, you know, I was proud of the FedEx Cares team giving me a car that could win, and, uh, you know, versus, uh, we'll take this and build up. One of the things we always hear after a road course is we got to have one of these in the chase. Well, you're a big road course racer. I love road, road racing, and and I think there needs to be one in the chase. Mm -hmm. I, I know <clears throat> it's such a it's such a, a strange beast mm -hmm. the road course racing, and and we saw it yesterday with with AJ Amendinger, where he runs up front, he has trouble, he goes to the back, and he has to come back, and he salvaged something, he, mm -hmm. he gained some points, uh, but you know, in the last four or five laps. You can lose twenty points in that race. Yeah, you know what I mean, I mean yeah. and and there's not of your own making. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the look last at, look lap, at Junior for yeah, example, you, yeah. you can lose a ton. So when you you look at that, that may be the reason they keep it out of the chase. I would like to see in the chase, and and have been a proponent of this from the very beginning, is that the chase is a mini schedule, mm -hmm. uh, and if you have road courses in the main schedule then you need one in the mini schedule. Yeah. If you have a super speedway, you need it in the mini schedule. Mm -hmm. If you need have short tracks, you need it in the mini schedule. So that configuration of tracks, which shows a true champion on all the different type race tracks. So would you have Sears Point, Sonoma, Watkins Glen, or a third track? Would you race a track twice? Road America I, keeps coming up. Yeah, don't go to Road America. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't care. You can think about I, it a little longer. I don't care. No, I'm not going to think about it. No. I, I would, I, you know, for me, I would probably go to Watkins Glen yeah. mm -hmm. uh, because Watkins Glen, this is one of those racetracks that is such a wild card. Mm -hmm. I don't believe Watkins Glen is as much a wild card. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you temper that a little bit. So I, I would probably put Watkins Glen in before I put Sonoma in. You hear a lot of the drivers describe Sonoma as the short course, the short track of road courses, and Watkins Glen as the intermediate track of road courses. Here, here's the funny part. I, I go way back. So I, I grew up racing at Riverside, mm -hmm. um, and we thought Riverside was a road course until we went to Watkins Glen. <laughs> and then we thought Watkins Glen was a road course until we went to Sonoma. Sonoma. Yeah. And they've changed Sonoma a lot you know we used to run the carousel mm -hmm. and, and all that part uh but that was that's a true road course watkins Glen uh, is, is a special place too just from the history and stuff but um and it was more of a road course for the cup cars than what riverside was uh but this is a tough place yeah we riverside. go to sonoma we forget how to count Oh, forget yeah. how to count yeah yeah, yeah. It's one two three three a yeah four yeah. b seven x yeah. eight D, yeah. it's like we just forget how to count yes we go there. yeah <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I never knew where I was at. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I saw one uh, from from your teammate, Tab Boyd, the spotter, that said one of the hardest things we have to do at Sonoma is during qualifying trying to find a place for our car to have a clean lap. 100%. I mean, the, the lap itself is a minute 15 to a minute 20 in that range. Mm -hmm. But you have to leave pit road, and you don't want to use your tires because there is some speed in some very fresh tires. So you're trying to get your driver all the way to the top of the hill up in seven to get him a good run down the S's, get some heat in the brakes, mm -hmm. get a little bit of heat in the tire so he can make a good run. Well, that's what everybody else is doing. Yeah. So now he's trying to get down the hill and get heat in his tires and brakes. Well, then when you're done, you have guys behind you that are trying to get to the Do top the of the thing. hill yeah. while you're getting in the way, or they're even on their speed lap. Mm -hmm. So it is a different animal there in Sonoma trying to get your car out on the track, not in the way, get a good clean lap down the S's, get heat in the brake, make your lap with nobody running, and then finish your lap without anybody getting in your way. And as a driver, when it doesn't work your way, it's always the spotter's fault. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Okay, right there. there. Yeah. Just want to go See, ahead and throw I that out. I love to blame Joe. You're fitting right in here. This is fantastic. This is perfect. Kyle, how come you think we've seen the road course ringers go away? Okay, I, this is uh, uh, this is pride and NASCAR pride talking. Mm -hmm. I don't think there ever were any road course ringers. Show me where a road course ringer won a cup race. But remember when they were all Show the rage. Show me when a road course ringer yeah. won a cup race. I, yeah. I don't care if they were the rage. Yeah. Show me when a cup road course ringer yeah. won a cup race. Right. They didn't win cup races. Even when we brought in the best of the best, they didn't win cup races. Ambrose came in, and he became a cup driver, and he won. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Montoya came in, and he was a cup driver, and he wins. And AJ, same thing. That's what they grew up on. But I, I think... But those guys were running yeah, full seasons. A, a cup car is such a, a different animal than what a road race car is or what an open-wheel car is. Um, and I think these teams have gotten incredible 
at building road course cars and understanding road course racing. To only do it twice a year, I would put any of these teams up against any other road race series and road race teams, yeah. not only drivers, I'm talking teams now, mm -hmm. um, against any of them with understanding what road racing is and how to make it work. So, you know, you're not going to be a road race ringer and come in and beat Tony Stewart or Jimmy Johnson mm -hmm. or, or those guys. You're just not going to do it anymore.